All right, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you back to America Talks Live. I'm Steve Malzberg, live from our New York City studios. And you can see over my, uh, my left shoulder there, uh, the White House. We're looking live at the White House and awaiting the emergence of the current president of the United States, Barack Obama, and the president-elect of the United States, Donald Trump. Uh, they've been meeting now for uh, about an hour or so. And uh, it's going to be very interesting to uh, see what uh, they have to say when they come out. Joining us right now, a man who really loved hearing me say uh, President-elect Donald Trump, uh, Pat Boone, legendary singer, TV host, number 10 all-time recording artist, according to Billboard. Hello, Pat. Welcome back, sir. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I had a wonderful feeling. Everything going our way. <laughs> very good. Very. I always love when you sing on this show. It's 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 an honor. Um, that is great. And um, boy, oh boy, it it what a night it was. Um, I, I want to jump to right ahead to this uh, because um, eighty one percent of white evangelicals went for Donald Trump. They really did coalesce around Donald Trump. Yes, and I have a part to play in Steve. Uh, at as last stage, you know, I made many millions of local calls for conservative causes and candidates in the past. And Jim Morton at 60 plus, the conservative alternative to ARP, uh, organized and was able to raise some funds uh, from people that were, were giving sat uh, sacrificially that we were able to do uh, three million robocalls in the last two or three days to the battleground states in support of people like Senator Burr and Ron Johnson in Wisconsin, Pat Toomey, uh, Kelly Ayotte, and all these various people who were on a razor's edge all through the night up to the last few minutes. Uh, the scale was teetering either way. And I, I like to think and hope to think that some of these three million robocalls that I made to Christian evangelicals who got off the couch, who registered, who did vote in, in, in uh, really unprecedented numbers that they turned the tide. And as I look at the White House now, uh, I feel like it, it's more our house. And I think about the man who's in there meeting with the president. Most everybody, uh, president elects who come to that office the first time, come from more humble beginnings. It's interesting that in this case, the White House is a grand place. Of course, it means everything to our country. But uh, this man, the new president-elect is used to palaces. <laughs> He's used to finery. He's not a man uh, of humble origin. He's a man accustomed to moving in corridors of power. And that guy, five states in, fi in the last day of campaigning, and on his own dime and in his own plane, uh, this has never, it's never been like this before. And I wish I could be a fly on the wall as the man who said this, he is un, he's, he's temperamentally unfit to be president, is now having to shake his hand and, uh, and, com and communicate with him and try to help make the transition peaceful, as I hope it will be. Absolutely. He also said just uh, the day before the election that Donald Trump's a man who gladly accepted the endorsement of the KKK. I mean, he was, he was, in, the gar he was in, the, in the gutter, in the gutter. Steve, as you know, was an outright lie. As fast as that could possibly be done, uh, Trump's people disavowed that that supposed uh, endorsement, and yet the president acted like he had welcomed it. That's not true. And unfortunately, that was typical of the way the race was going. Where no matter what, it, whether it was truthful or not, it didn't matter. They would just say it. And uh, and I tell you, when uh, when Hillary was accosting Trump for uh, for things he said 11 years earlier things that were, as she said, abusive and assaults on women. I wanted him and I tried to communicate with him knowing that was going to happen. Say, stop, stop for a minute. Say, let me ask you, if your husband, Bill Clinton, were running for president right now, would you vote for him and let it hang in the air? <laughs> See what her answer would be. Well, well, well I, 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 a man who did things in the Oval Office that I only talked about and you're giving me a hard time? Yep. Yep. And uh, th that's it got down into the gutters. She said, we're taking the high road. 
It's never been as low as that. And when they met in Philadelphia the night before in what looked like a moment of triumph, while she'd still been so critical of things Trump said, Jay-Z was up there using F-words, yep. dropping F-bombs liberally. and The N-word, and, yep. And, and she was applauding mightily because it was in her favor. And, I mean, there, there's been such a hypocrisy in, in the campaign. And now I think we're going to get down to some real nitty-gritty uh, reality. And this first 100 days, of course, we've got to look out, as you were just saying, for the, for the next few days, the next 70 <clears throat> days, while this man who has wielded executive power uh, without any scruples or any regard for the Constitution, we've got to be careful now that he doesn't try to continually, uh, fundamentally transform America into something we don't recognize uh, before he leaves office. Well, I agree with you, I, and, and most of those will be able to be undone on the first day by, Bar by uh, Donald Trump, President Trump. Uh, but there are some things like uh, letting the U.N. declare a Palestinian state, maybe releasing tens or hundreds of thousands of quote-unquote low-level prisoners who were in prison unfairly onto our streets. Once they're out, I don't know how you get them back in either. So you're right to be very, very concerned. Let me ask you about this Hollywood stuff. Um, you know, so many of them said they're going to leave the country. But, you know, Hillary Clinton brought out, and this is the only way she could get the big crowds near the end. As you mentioned, Jay-Z, uh, Jay -Z, Beyonce, um, St Bruce Springsteen, Stevie Wonder, Lady Gaga. Um, yeah. And you know what? They all made their impassioned pleas and their, their star status, celebrity status. And it didn't matter because the very people they were trying to appeal to, African-Americans, millennials, they didn't show up for her. And some coal miners in Ohio, and some uh, and some fellows in the Appalachians, and some men and women in small towns across the country who finally realized, hey, it's up to me. I've got to go to the polls. I've got to vote, and they did. And uh, not only that, there was prayer and fasting, Steve, across the country. And I wrote something for uh, well for Newsmax and uh, and for World Net Daily um, uh, called the People and God have spoken. And I base it on Second Chronicles 7, 14, which of course is in the Hebrew or the Judeo-Christian Bible, that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, not everybody, but my people humble themselves and pray, seek my face, pray, turn from their own wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. This was a mighty promise from the throne of heaven and, and people who believe that and who call on the name of God, which is Jehovah, there are other gods with other names, but the name of God in the Hebrew Christian Bible is Jehovah. They called on that name and uh, fasted and prayed, and he heard. And now I say the people and our God have spoken. Yeah, very interesting. We're talking, of course, to Pat Boone. You know, it, it all comes down to me, and this is why I never understood any self-proclaimed conservative who would do anything other than vote for Trump and allow a Hillary Clinton-appointed Supreme Court uh, when it comes to right to life, when it comes to protecting the unborn, when it comes to the Second Amendment, when it comes to the First Amendment, when it comes to so religious freedom, religious liberty, how anybody who said, I'm a conservative, but... You know, Trump's not a conservative, so I'm, I'm going to vote for Joe Blow and uh, write in Joe Blow or write in my father's name. And uh, you know you're only helping Hillary. Um, uh, thank God they didn't succeed. I think one of the most ignominious moments was in Ohio when uh, Kasich, and I like Kasich a lot, I would have supported him as a, as a presidential candidate. I, I, if a lot of us liked him, but then when he would not even support the, the the man who had won the nomination and came to his home state, knowing it was going to be a crucial state, didn't even show up. And this man won anyway. I wonder how he's feeling right now when he realized that his absence voted for Hillary. It was a vote for Hillary and for everything she and this, uh, this administration stands for. Everybody who laid out and abandoned the Republican ticket. Yep voted for the other ticket, and they lost. Absolutely. And, and in Ohio, uh, his, his constituents gave him a resounding defeat there by uh, voting for Donald Trump. Pat, it's always great to see you, my friend. God bless you. Stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. It's a happy day. <laughs> good, it's good for America.
I, I love when you say it better than anybody else. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Pat Boone, ladies and gentlemen. All right, coming up next, I mentioned at the top of the show and we showed you some examples of the uh, protests yesterday. Lots of arrests, 65 people here in New York. You had someone uh, in L.A. saying there's got to be uh, deaths on both sides. Uh, you had um, uh, uh, someone be uh, a Trump voter getting beaten up by a bunch of thugs in Chicago, black uh, kids beating up a white guy. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting dangerous. It's getting scary. And I think it's only going to get worse. And in my view, it's because of people like Van Jones who at that CNN allows to just spew um, garbage. And we're going to look into that on the Gimme Five that's coming up next. You're not going to want to miss it.